right, make your way to your seat. Ladies and gentlemen, make your way to your seat. Can you guys, can you guys hear me good? Can you see me good? I know, because my head shining, huh? Bam. Bam, bam, bam. <clears throat> Man, what an awesome, awesome start to a, or whatever, I don't know, start, middle, we're almost done. What a beautiful, beautiful service so far, man. I, I appreciate you guys. I think we have had uh, an incredibly well-behaved camp. And I appreciate your hearts. I appreciate your attentiveness. I appreciate your respect. And if you guys just give me 15 minutes, 20 max, of your undivided attention, I promise, I believe God will speak something into your heart that will help you change your life and set us, set us apart so that when we go down this mountaintop, we're able to live victorious for him. Everybody holler back and say, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so we're getting ready to hear the word of God. The word of God, amen. The word of God is, is his word from his heart and his mouth. It explains who he is. The Bible says that, that um, when the word, when God wanted to communicate the word to us, he sent Jesus. And so Jesus is a demonstration of this word wrapped up in the flesh. And so when we see Jesus, we see God's heart. We see who he really is. We, see what, we, listen, we hear what he really wants to say. And we're able to really commune with God. And so that's why it's so important when the word of God is going forth, young people, when, when anybody's up here sharing the word, it is important that you, you fight with everything in you to listen not for Pastor Chad's voice, PC's voice, but listen for the voice of God to your heart. Amen? Amen. And so we're going to pray. And, and when I pray, right after I get done, I'm, I'm going to preach God's word. This isn't my opinion. This isn't, this isn't uh, my idea. This is God's word. And this thing has, st has stood long before any of our lives. And guess what? It's going to stand long, long after any of our lives are dead and gone. This word will remain. The Bible says the grass will wither, the flower will fade, but the word of our Lord will stand forever, man. This thing is strong, and you can build your life on it. And when you build your life on this, when the storms of life come, this is what Jesus said, it won't, it won't be shaken. Your house, your house, the house of your life will not fall because it's built on the solid rock, the foundation of Jesus Christ and God's word. Amen? And so, let's... Have, Y'all ready to hear the word? All right, let's do this. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word of God. We pray, Lord, that you would speak, Lord God, to our hearts. Let it take deep root in our lives and sprout up through, through our lives and flex through us, God, to show off, show yourself strong, show yourself mighty. Do what you do and only what you can do. In Jesus' mighty name, let everybody say amen. amen. Now, I need you to look at somebody. I need you to look at somebody real quick. All right, look at them like they stole your lunch money. Oh, my goodness. I said look at them like they stole your lunch money. All right, and you're going you're gonna to help me preach. You're going to help me preach. Say neighbor. neighbor. All right, get your, get your Southern Baptist, fire baptized, swashbuckling, gospel preaching power of God voice on and say neighbor. neighbor. All right, you guys ain't ready. All right, it, I'm, I want you to shake their hand. Grab their hand, man. Shake their hand. Shake it like you're about to shake it off. Look at them and say, neighbor. neighbor. Say, oh, neighbor. neighbor. It's time for you to fight for the promise. All right, look at somebody else. Look at somebody else. Smile at them only if you brushed your teeth before you came to church. Smile at them only if you brushed your teeth before you came to church. I want you to look at them. Shake their hand. Shake it like you're about to shake it off. Shake it. Shake, shake, shake it. Come on, shake it off. All right, take, get your Taylor Swift on and shake it off. Here we go. Shake it off. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Say, oh, neighbor. neighbor. Say, it's time for you to fight, to fight. For, the for the promise. Everybody say, that's what's, up. that's what's up. Check it out. Can I take you about 2,000 years ago? Let's go. Let's travel about 2,000 years ago, a little bit more than that. And, and, and I'm going to take you to a scene by the Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee is in Israel, and Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, -S, Jesus, 
has come to the scene. He's walking along the Sea of Galilee. He's walking, he probably walked like this. And, I, and then I bet you he would hear something like this, like. But, he, but watch, he's checking it out. He's checking it out. He's check, 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 checking it out. Jesus is like walking along the Sea of Galilee. He's checking it out, checking it out. He's check, 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 checking it out. He's checking it out. He's checking it out. He's check, 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 check. I need somebody with like beatboxes and remixes and wicked, wicked, checking it out. He's checking it out. He's check, 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 checking it out. He's checking it out. Y'all off beat, checking it out. He's check, 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 checking it out. He's checking it out. Checking it out. Check, 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 checking it out. He's looking to find, listen, he's looking, all right, that's good. <laughs> Y'all finally get the beat when the, when the point's over. Like, hey, we got the beat. Hey, turn up. Now, earlier there was like. That's what y'all did. <laughs> you should have hit it like. <laughs> but anyways, that's what you should have done from jump. He's checking it out and he's looking 2, 000, over 2,000 years ago, looking to recruit a dream team for him that will change the course of history forever. Somebody say forever. He's looking to recruit a dream team that will change the course of history forever. Forever? Forever, ever? Forever, ever? Forever, ever? Man, look at somebody and say, that's a long time. That's a long time, man. It's, we're talking about forever. And so Jesus, the Son of God, comes to the earth spotless and blameless, sinless, and he's walking along the Sea of Galilee in Matthew chapter 4. And the Bible says he's looking to recruit for him a dream team that will change the course of history forever. And the Bible says he walks up and he sees these two young men. They're teenagers, young adults, somewhere in there. And not too, not too much older than some of you. Maybe they're right around the age of some of you. And this is what the Bible says they're doing. Peter and his brother Andrew. And the Bible says they're throwing their nets into the sea, for they were fishermen. And here's what Jesus says. Jesus, looking to recruit a dream team that's better than Barkley, Jordan, uh, Patrick Ewan, and, and, and all the original dream team, right? Magic. Uh, the 99, 1992 dream team. This is better. Y'all don't even know about that because you weren't even born in 1992. But listen. Trying to recruit a dream team that will change the course of history forever. And he sees these two young men. They were fishermen. They were casting their net. And here's what Jesus says to them. Listen. He says, take up your net. Cast, cast your net. Throw, take up your net. Throw it, throw it. Throw it away. Leave it. And follow me. And he says, I'll make you fishers of men. And Jesus takes these young men and causes through the lives of these young men to change the course of history forever. Let's put a pause right here. Ready? Pause your, pause your phone right there, your iPhone 6. Boom. Let's go back. <laughs> All right. Now, here's what I want you to do. We're going to step back into time. And we're going to step back into time so that you all understand the significance of what Jesus did when he was recruiting these two teenagers. See, these two teenagers, they were fishermen, but in, in, they were Jewish young men, and in the Jewish educational system, these young men, uh, uh, what you have to understand is they went through a certain, a certain uh, education system that's much different than ours. So from 
roughly from the age of about 5 to about 11 or 12 years old, they would learn the first five books of the Bible. Bible readers, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Come on, y'all. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's the books, the, the books of the law. That's the Torah. That's Moses' books, all right? And, and, and what they would do is they would learn those first five books of the Bible, not just the, not just stories about Noah and the ark and Adam and Eve and, and Joseph and the coat of many colors and Moses on the mountaintop and, and Moses parting the Red Sea and, and all these different things that took place in, 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 in those first five books of the Bible. But listen, they would learn the first five books of the Bible word for word. So from the age of about five to about 11 or 12, they were learning this. They were learning to, to get the Word of God word for word. We're talking memorizing the Bible. But listen, if they weren't good enough, if they were like, man, somebody said, man, they're not good enough, they don't make the cut, right? They're not good enough, then what they would do is they would go and they would begin to uh, work their family trade. Some of them would work in the marketplace, some of them would work in, 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 in uh, uh, whatever their family trade was. They were fishermen, they were carpenters, they would work in the marketplace, whatever the case may be, they would go work with their family. But if they were good enough, then they would go to the next level of education. And if, if, if they were good enough, then they would go into what we would consider like junior high, high school, right? And, and from the age of about 11 or 12 to about the age of 15 or so, they would then learn the rest of the books of the Old Testament from all the way from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, all the way from Deuteronomy to Malachi. They wouldn't just learn things about Daniel and the lion's den and, 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 and David and Goliath and all these different stories, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, but they would learn all the way from Deuteronomy to Malachi word for word. And so now by the time they're about age 15, they will have learned the entire Old Testament word for word. They've got it memorized. It's in their heart. But listen, if they weren't good enough, then, there, then someone in their, in their, around their life, their teachers, would say, oh, we don't really see what you, that, you know, that you're good enough. So you did good here, but you're not good enough to go to the next level. So just go work your family trade. And they would, they would go and they would work with their family. Fishermen, they, they would be fishermen, they would be uh, work in the marketplace, they would be carpenters, whatever their family trade was. But if they were good enough, then they would go to the next level uh, of education. And it was much, it's much like our college system. Your, our college system is some of you guys are getting ready to go to college, and what you have to do is you have to fill out an application. Y'all with me? You have to fill out an application, and you apply to this college because that college has something that you want them to impart into your life. That college has something that can teach you the direction of your life and the way it should go. And so if you want to go, let's just say you want to be a pediatrician, and the University of Arizona has a, has a good medical school. And so you say, well, I want to learn to be a good doctor, so I'm going to apply to med school at, 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 at pre-med at, at, at University of Arizona. And so you apply, and here's what happens. Then they take your application, and they look at your life, and they begin to... To weigh all that you you've done and and look at everything that you have and they kind of do an assessment to see if you've got what it takes to be able to enroll into their school well see at as a young man if they were good enough then the Jewish educational system would allow these rabbis then to look the rabbis were teachers into these young men's lives they would come and they would apply to a certain rabbi listen this might be too deep for some of you but I think you might be able to get it they would learn to apply to the rabbi, not just to know the information that the rabbi had, but to do what the rabbi did. And so if they had what it took, then the rabbi would say, if he believed, and he saw in that young man, or that, and, and, and if, if, he, if he had what it took, he'd say, come and learn of me. Take this yoke upon you and learn of me. And he would follow him, and he would walk with him, and he would learn from him. Now, the Bible calls Jesus a rabbi. Back to the story. Walking along the Sea of Galilee, he sees two young men, for they were fishermen. What does that mean? That means somewhere along the lines, guys, somewhere along the line, lady, somebody told them they weren't good enough. Something in their life, whether it be a struggle, whether it be a, a, whatever, a sin or a family condition or something, something along their life said they weren't good enough. Somebody said, you don't have what it takes. 
But in the midst of everybody saying you don't have what it takes, God's holy and righteous only begotten son looks into their life as a rabbi, comes to them and says, listen, no matter what the world has said, no matter how bad they've thrown you aside, I choose you. Come on. You. <laughs> Follow me. Follow me. You've got what it takes. And I believe Jesus is doing that right now. He's, he's, he's walking along, along the, the hills of Prescott, man. And he's checking it out. He's checking it out through your counselors. And he's checking it out through the breakout sessions. And he's checking it out through these, uh, through these uh, evening sessions. And he's looking to recruit a dream team that he can use to change the course of history forever. There's a story in the Old Testament, the book of Joshua. The Bible says that there's this guy who, who, who's a young man who was, who was a leader and anointed by God to do great things. Joshua was first found in the Bible in, in Exodus, and he's down in the valley fighting for the children, for God's purposes. He's down in the valley when nobody knows his name, when nobody's shouting out his stats, when nobody's giving him props. He's down there and he's serving God. He's serving his purposes, and I believe that this is the way God chooses. God chooses not according to the way man chooses. Man chooses like when, when, when you look good, or you, you sing good, or you think good, or you're, you have the ability, or you have the pedigree, which means your family's good, or whatever the case may be. Man chooses like that. This is what the Bible says about God choosing David. He says, man looks like on the outward appearance, but listen, look at me, young people. God chooses according to your heart. So God's looking. He's looking. And he's checking it out. You know what he's looking for? He's looking for a heart. He's looking for a heart that will say, God, I want you to take my life. All of my struggles, all my issues, I'm not going to let them disqualify me for another day. I want you to take me. I want you to use me. I want you to take my, my broken family and I want you to set me right back in the middle of my broken family and I want you to use me to speak hope to my mom and my dad and my family and those around me. I want you to set me in the middle of my broken school. I want you to set me in the middle of my broken generation and culture. People that need you desperately. I want you to use me. God, choose me. God chose Joshua. Joshua was a mighty man of God, a young man who, who was commissioned by God. And you, do you guys mind if I just keep painting the picture? I want you to understand the Bible. So, so Joshua is the, the predecessor of our guy Moses, okay? Moses, you guys know, the prince of Egypt. Many of you have seen it. Moses is the guy who God calls to lead the children of Israel out of bondage from the Egyptians. They're slaves to the Egyptians. And so he leads them out of bondage, and they're in the wilderness for 40 years. They're wandering in the wilderness, and here's what's taking place. While they're in the wilderness, they're just wandering. They're just going around the same mountain, the same stuff, seeing the same stuff over and over and over, and God keeps on moving, and he keeps on preserving, and he keeps on captivating their attention, but they never choose to fully believe him with their hearts. Man, I feel like I've been there before, guys. I've been there before. There, there are some things in my life that I still feel like are still wandering around in the wilderness. And if any adult in here would be honest with you, they would tell you the same thing. That's, that that this, is, this is something that we need God to come into our life and help us to lead us into the promised land. Because what happened is they took a 40-year journey and it was only supposed to take two weeks. There are some things, young people, in your life that you're supposed to travel through and it's not supposed to take your whole, all your teenage years. You should, you should be able to get victory in your life. Maybe, maybe it's your, it's your, that was my freshman struggle. Man, but as a sophomore, you know, you, you should have kicked that algebra in the tail by now, right? That was, that was my sophomore struggle, but that's not my junior struggle. And that was my junior struggle, or, or my first semester junior struggle. But I'm not going to let that be my senior struggle. And I'm not going to let my senior struggle carry on into my college struggle. Because listen, if you, listen young people, listen to me good. 
If you don't learn to lick stuff right now and, 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 and take care of stuff in your life right now, it will carry on into your adulthood and you will have to deal with it at some point in your life. Many of us are dealing with the result of our decisions from when we were your age. We're adults and we're still dealing with the decisions that we made, horrible decisions, when we were teenagers. So your life matters now. And I believe God wants you and he's calling you now. Everybody say now. And so Joshua takes the children of Israel. And, and what happens is he leads them because, because he was, him and this guy named Caleb were the only two people that went into the promised land and they spied it out. They, they got to the promised land. They got to this river called Jordan. And, 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 and they go into the promised land and they spy it out and they come back with a report. But everybody else from the old generation, the Bible says, they didn't believe. And so here's what happens in Joshua chapter 5. The Bible says that in Joshua chapter 5, God decides to let an unbelieving generation die off. He says, I can't do anything with a generation who will not believe me. And so he allows them to die off. And so the young people that were born in the wilderness, he says, I'm going to raise them up. And what he does is he says in Joshua chapter 5, he, says, he tells Joshua, he says, go and, and tell, the, tell the children of Israel that I'm commanding them to be circumcised. Circumcision represented uh, the, the, uh, the promise of the covenant between God and man back then. And, and so, and, and so they, he, they take this generation. They ta he takes this generation and Joshua leads them across the river Jordan. Y'all with me? They go across the river Jordan and they get into the promised land. And listen, when they get into the promised land, everybody say fight for the promise. Come on, I need you to, I need you to say it with some swag right now. I said say fight for the promise. Fight for the promise. They get into the promised land and the very first thing when they cross the river Jordan, they get in the promised land and the very first place that they have to face is this huge huge place which the Bible says is a stronghold and it's called it's called Jericho it's this city that is flooded with these ites in it Canaanites Girgashites Jebusites Heavites all these ites in it and, and, and those ites were tribes listen those tribes represented these 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 rebellion these rebellious people against God and so in the promised land were all these ites. But Joshua called them across the River Jordan to go into the River Jordan because they were his chosen generation and, they, and they, they, they believed God. And so they go and the very first thing after they cross over into the promised land, I need you to understand this and hear this really good. Because some of you are going to think that when you, just because you received Jesus up here on the mountaintop and it was fun, it was lovely, and it's like God forgives me. Yes, I need that. Sign me up. God has a purpose for my life. Yes, I need that. Sign me up. But it doesn't automatically mean that life is going to be easy. That's not what you signed up for. You know what you signed up for? When you sign up to follow Jesus in your life, you're not signing up to be soft. You're not signing up to be a wimp. You know what you're signing up for? You're signing up to be a warrior. You're signing up to be a soldier in the army of the Lord to fight no longer for you, the things you desire, but the things he desires. And how many of y'all know this world doesn't love Jesus? This culture doesn't seek to love him, doesn't seek to honor him. Joshua crosses the river Jordan and the very first place that they face is this place called Jericho now let me just tell you just a little bit about Jericho Jericho is this place that has huge walls surrounding it it is the most fearful place in all of the promised land the promised land is full of fighting and just because you're you don't feel like you're in you, you just because you think you're in the promised land after you receive Jesus it doesn't mean it's gonna be easy it's gonna be full of fighting and so they face the biggest, the biggest wall, the biggest, most fearful place called Jericho. And the Bible says that, the, Bi the Bible history tells us that the walls of Jericho were so big that it made people af afraid of them because you couldn't penetrate the walls. So if you couldn't penetrate the walls, you couldn't go in and tear down what was happening on the inside of there. And so the Bible says in, Gen in Joshua chapter 6, in, in verse 1, it says, Now Jericho was securely shut up. Listen, nothing got in, 
and nothing got out. That's the definition of a stronghold. A stronghold, listen, is something that doesn't allow anything in, doesn't allow anything out. The enemy works overtime and has been working overtime in your life to make you be a person that, has, that is flooded with strongholds, where you can't receive anything and you can't give anything. Jericho was securely shut up, the Bible says, and those walls were thick, and people feared the walls. Matter of fact, Bible history tells us that, that if, if you even came up against those walls, that they would take and they would kill you, and if you tried to defeat those walls, they would kill you, and they would take your bones, and they would make your bones part of the brick and mortar to even strengthen the wall even more. So that to say, to say look, if you even try to come up against this thing, not only are you going to lose, but you're going to make it even stronger. And this is the first battle that they have to face after they cross over the, off, over the River Jordan and into the Promised Land. But here's what God says. He tells them, he says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to march around those walls. I don't want you to say anything. I don't want you to say anything. For six days, I want you to march around those walls. March around one time for six days. And so they took the children of Israel and the army and they marched around the walls one time for six days. And then the Bible says on the seventh day, here's what I want you to do. I want you to march around seven times and after the seventh time, I want you to lift up your voice. I want you to lift up the trumpets and, the, and, and, and all of the instruments and I want you to shout unto God because God has given you the city. And here's what happens. They shout, they lift up their voice. And they shout, and the Bible says that the Jericho walls fell flat into the ground. They didn't even have to fight with their hands. They fought with their belief, their obedience to God, and their praise to Him. They're going to be, listen, some of you are dealing with, there's a lot of things up here. Suicide, brokenness, anger, shame, insecurities, doubt, fear, rejection, worthless. Orphan hearts, traitors, neglected. Might feel like you have dealt with some of this stuff. But the Bible teaches us that in the New Testament, as Joshua crossed over the, over the River Jordan and into the Promised Land, this is what happens when you, as a believer, receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. When we receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, here's what happens. We take the perfect payment of Jesus Christ for all of our sins. There's nothing that you can do that would be good enough to earn your forgiveness from God. So God knew that. And so he had to send Jesus. So Jesus comes. He lives a perfect life. He dies a horrible death. The Bible says death on a cross. And when he dies on the cross, he, he, he's buried. And on the third day, he rises. He conquers and defeats death and the grave. Sin and the grave. Sin and death is defeated in Christ. And now, because he did the work, God knew that there wouldn't be anything that we could do to do the work. So Jesus does the work. Watch this. And now when we receive Jesus, we receive the fact that he's strong. He's mighty. He's good. He's righteous. And all of those things that he is, now I be, I'm able to be a partaker of because Christ lives inside of me. And watch this. Here's what happens. It's the cross of Christ that allows you to cross over the River Jordan and cross over into the promise of your life. Do you know that God has an amazing plan for each and every single one of you under the sound of my voice right now? A plan? Listen, sit up in your seats, fellas. Ladies, thank you. Listen, every single one of you has an amazing, God has an amazing plan in his mind and in his heart for your lives. And the only way, the only way that you're going to step into that plan and into that promise is by receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and taking this cross and using the cross to cross over into your life. And here's how you do it. You know how you do it? You take the cross. How you cross over is you take the cross and you put the cross over, 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 over everything. That's how you do it. You put the cross over everything. And when you put the cross over your, your sin issues, over your rejection issues, over an orphaned heart, 
over feeling, feelings that are worthless, over fear, over doubt, over insecurity, over shame, over anger, over suicide, over brokenness. You put the cross over those things, man, and then that gives you the strength to be able to cross over, and God does it through his spirit. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to end just like this. But if you see, I need one, two, three, four, five. There's 12 boxes up here. I need a handful of guys and a handful, listen, no, 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 handful of girls. This is serious, though. This is honest and serious. This isn't like fun, I want to be on stage. Listen, I appreciate it. But, but look, if you see yourself in any one of these things, I want, I want to have an honest moment in here. And you feel like, man, Pastor Chad, that's me. I deal horribly with insecurity. And I want, I want, to, I want, to, I want to take insecurity and here's what I want to do. I'm going to take insecurity, and I want to take it to the cross, and I want to cross over, over insecurity, and take it and go from insecurity into hope. I need 12 of you. If you see yourself up here, just get up here. First 12, you pick it up. Stand in line, stand in line. Come on. All right, we only got 12. I only need 12 of you. Once your box is gone, you got to go back to your seat. All right, guys and ladies, if you don't have a box, line up back here. And we can have the band come real quick, or just keys or whatever. I don't, it doesn't matter, whatever. Line up over here, guys. <clears throat> Amen. I want you to take this, I want you to take anger. Right? You believe Jesus? Take your anger, bro. I appreciate you being honest. I want you to take this anger, man. I want, I want, you, to let, I, I want you to trust God that the power in the cross is strong enough to make you cross over in your life, bro. I believe it, man. I believe God can make your life cross over out of anger. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Crossing over from anger. Oh, I got you, brother. You got to stay on the cross, man. I got you. Cross over. Now stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. What do you cross? Stand up here, man. Stand up here. What are you crossing over? From anger? Turn it, man. Turn it. Crossing over from anger into joy. Amen? Let's go. From doubt, show them. Doubt. We're crossing over, man. We're crossing over. Take that doubt. I want you to cross over. What are you crossing over? From doubt into faith. Let's go. Suicide. Not another day, honey. Not another day. You, you, God has a purpose for your life. From suicide into what? Come on, y'all. Crossing over from brokenness. Take it. Take it to the cross. The cross causes you to cross over from brokenness into being healed. You go, man. Take that shame, bro. Crossover. There we go. Into honor. Insecurity. Take it. Show them. Show them. Into hope. Rejection. Let's go, big man. From rejection into chosen. Fear. Fear into Love. What is it, man? Oh, traitor into ally. There it was. Traitor into ally. Thank you. <laughs> I'm hooked on phonics. Orphan heart. Crossover from an orphan into a son or a daughter. Amen? Let's go. Neglected. From neglect, buddy. Show them what you're crossing over to. Wanted. That's right. What is it? Worthless. Cross it over, man. Into important. I want you to stack them there. That's right. And here's what I want you to do tonight. Thank you guys for being honest. <clears throat> I, I wanted you to see them because I believe that same thing what they just did, by faith can happen for you. 
And so if you have any, and not just all those things up there, but anything that you're dealing with that you feel like is keeping you from stepping into the promised land of your life, tonight, I just want you to, this is what we're going to do. We're just going to stand up right where we are in our seats. We're going to stand up. If, if, if that's you, all right, stand up. Everybody stand up. And here's what I want you to do. If you're ready to cross over and you want to cross over, you have things that you need to cross over. And what I want you to do, and you want to receive, listen, the only way it's going to get done is if you know Jesus. Do you hear me? The only way it's going to get done is if you know Jesus. Some of you guys, some of you guys received Jesus last night. Many of you did. If you did, if you came up last night and you received Jesus and you believed it and you meant it, then it's done. Do you hear me? I'm not talking to those of you. Now you're saved. Now you can pray for somebody else. But for those of you who said, Pastor Chad, I didn't go up last night, but I don't want to let tonight go by without me receiving Jesus and crossing over into the promised land of my life. And you know what the greatest promised land for your life is, is that you cross over into salvation, into a personal, real relationship with Jesus Christ. And if that's you, every head bowed, every eye closed, on the count of three, I just want you to slip your hand up in the air, all right, on the count of three, one, two, three. I want to receive Jesus tonight. I didn't come up last night, but I want to receive Jesus tonight. And if you want to do that, I see your hands, guys. I see your hands. All right, awesome. Now, here's what I want you to do. Those of you that have your hands up, I want you to just make your way and come right here in front of me at the altar. I don't want you to get up on stage. I want you to just get out of your seat. Those of you that raised your hand, I want you to hustle, use your muscle, get up here. That's right. Come on, y'all, give it up for them. These young people. Now, 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 look at me and listen. Give me your eyes for a second. Anybody else? You want to come? Anybody else? All right. <clears throat> look at me. Those of you that came to the altar tonight. Jesus, Jesus died for you. And that's why you're coming, right? Is that why you're coming? To receive Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? That's why you're coming? Yes? You, wanna, you, you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Yeah? You believe He died for you on the cross? Amen? You want Him to come into your heart and be Lord of your life. And that's all we're going to say, right? The Bible says it's just like, just like Jesus He's knocking on the door of your heart. You just got to open up your heart let Him in. And when He comes in, the Bible says that, that He's able to live there now and make, make your heart His home. And from now on, you're saved. It's your job now to walk with Him, to cling to His hand and let Him shepherd you and lead you and let Him recruit you tonight to be a part of the dream team that changes the world forever, forever, ever, forever, ever, forever. You're a part of that dream team tonight, all right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lead you through a prayer, and I want you to pray this prayer after me. And it's going to be my words, but let them be from your heart, all right? That's all that matters. If it's from your heart, that's all that matters. All right? So let's, let's just, um, those of you that are at the altar, I want you to just say this prayer. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Son of God, and you died for me on the cross. And I ask, in the name of Jesus, that you'd come into my heart, that you'd be Lord of my life tonight. I choose you as my Lord and as my Savior, and I'm crossing over into the promised land of my life. I believe you died for me, and you arose for me, and because of that, I'm saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on. Now look, the Bible says you're saved. Amen, that's it. It was that simple. You're saved. Hey, guys, can you help appreciate these young people that came to the altar tonight? Come on, give it up for them. Amen. Amen. So listen, listen, before you go back to your seat,